You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another movie review. Today I will be talking about the 1981 film Shock Treatment. Now, Shock Treatment is a follow-up to the 1975 movie The Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. Now, I say follow-up because uh, there's a debate whether or not it's a sequel. Um, it's sort It is definitely a sequel, as far as I'm concerned, but it's a very, very different movie, so you gotta know what to expect going into it. Now, this review is going to have spoilers for both films, in, like, really heavy spoilers for the Rocky Horror Picture Show and Shock Treatment, so if you haven't seen those movies and you don't want them spoiled, I recommend you watch them beforehand, or, uh, otherwise you're gonna get it spoiled. So first off, let me say, start by saying, if you go in expecting this movie to be exactly like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, you're going to be heavily disappointed. The Rocky Horror Picture Show was a lot more sexual than this movie. This movie is still insane. Uh, I'd say the way, the way you should expect this movie to be going into it is you should expect it to be a movie that's just as insane as the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nowhere near as sexual, obviously, like I said. But uh, it's still a, a different experience. It's, a, it's, just as, it's really memorable, I think. So, Shock Treatment picks up with Brad and Janet, the two protagonists from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, now recast, back in their hometown of Denton, which is actually a giant TV studio where people have been brainwashed into living their life as a, basically a TV show and just doing everything that they're told to do. Now, uh, bef before I go too much into the plot, which I will go over, I'm going to mention some of the similarities between this and Rocky Horror Picture Show, other than the two main characters, of course. Because although the plot and themes of the movies are entirely different, I can't help but feel that there's some sort of underlying tone that I feel... There's just a certain feel to it that makes them feel like they go right together. Other than, of course, the fact that they have the two same main characters. So aside from Brad and Janet being two characters that are in both movies, although different cast... or though different actors, there are several original cast members who return, albeit in different roles. For instance, Richard O'Brien, who had previously played uh, Riff Raff in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, plays one of the two crazy, incestuous doctors in this. And then his sister-slash-lover, who is also a doctor, or rather also a uh, character actor portraying a doctor, as it's later revealed, uh, they are both actually character actors, um, is played by the chick who played Magenta. I think she was Patricia Quinn. Yeah, Patricia Quinn. And then, uh, Nell, uh, hold on, let me actually check her name to make sure I'm saying it right. Yeah, Nell Campbell, who had previously played Columbia, now plays a nurse in Shock Treatment. And Charles Gray, who had played the narrator in Rocky Horror Picture Show, plays a investigative scientist kind of guy in Shock Treatment. So aside from the recurring characters and other recurring cast members, there's another, there's a lot of other similarities between the two movies. For instance... They're both musicals, and the music is very similar in tone between the two movies. Now, the Rocky Horror Picture Show was a satire on, or rather a parody and tribute to horror and sci-fi. It was just a tribute parody, and it did that very well, in a very over-sexualized manner, mind you. But uh, Shock Treatment is actually a satire about society's obsession with television, and, uh, it's actually, it actually comes across as somewhat of a social commentary, and I really think that that actually does it really well. Back to the plot, here's why I kind of think it's kind of a social commentary. So Brad is a normal guy, but uh, because everyone's all brainwashed, there's this asshole who I'll get to in a moment, who uh, has Brad put in this mental institution, which is also part of the TV show, because he, he says he's quote-unquote crazy, but obviously Brad is not crazy, they just want to lock, it, lock him up, and his motives are revealed at the end of the movie, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But while Brad is locked up in this asylum, Janet is convinced to becoming this self-obsessed self uh, self -obsessed, rather, celebrity who basically just gets brainwashed into being kind of a bitch with how self-centered and uh, famous she becomes. Of course, then they start drugging her, so uh, I don't think she can be fully blamed later on, although... I do think it's definitely a lot on her part of how she became. 
So towards the end of the movie, it's revealed that the main antagonist, the guy who put Brad in the asylum, was actually Brad's brother, who was in love with Janet. And then there's this big scene at the end where they're arguing, and basically the town sides with Brad's brother, and they all end up in the asylum like he wants them to, whereas Brad and Janet escape that crazy town. So how do I feel this compares to the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Well, there is one big notable thing that obviously is a detriment to it. No Tim Curry. Uh, and obviously you can't have expected him to be in it because Frank dies at the end of Rocky Horror Picture Show. But uh, he's really what made that movie. Uh, I think this movie did really, really well despite not having him, but that definitely does po point the odds in favor of Rocky Horror just because Tim Curry, let's just face it, the man radiates charisma wherever he is. But despite the fact that I do feel overall the Rocky Horror Picture Show is a better movie, there are some things I like better about Shock Treatment. For instance, I feel that the pacing in Shock Treatment is a little bit better. In the Rocky Horror Picture Show, although I absolutely love the film, there were a few moments, I can't think of any specific examples, but there's a few moments where it feels like the plot kind of drags. Whereas in Shock Treatment, I never felt like it dragged. It, it felt like it all went along smoothly and naturally. Now, I think that uh, this movie is a definitely adequate follow-up. It's probably one of my favorite sequels to a movie. It definitely does not surpass the original, but it's definitely on par with it. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is a classic and a phenomenon. That will never change. I mean, they still do theatrical screenings where people interact with it. But I feel Shock Treatment is a very unfairly overlooked and underrated follow-up. If you go into it expecting the Rocky Horror Picture Show, like I said, you will be disappointed. But if you go into it expecting a fun, similarly toned musical adventure with that's obviously a lot toned down as far as sexual content goes, you'll 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 like it. It's a really good musical, and I don't like musicals most of the time. But uh, I would say Shock Treatment comes right after Rocky Horror Picture Show in my list of top ten musicals if it were to exist. So if you're a fan of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and you want to see another uh, another adventure in the lives of Brad and Janet, I definitely recommend you check out Shock Treatment. Other than that, you guys have a great day. This has been Fugitive Reddit.